Hi, uh, my name is Lucilla. My question is um, whether there is, or and if so, to what extent, um, an exchange or um, sort of experience uh, sharing um, with the communities of Herrera and Nama that are suing the German government in the United States currently um, because of yeah of the genocide in, in what is now Namibia, um, or if, if that has not happened yet, if you could... Um, maybe reflect on the possibility of that exchange? Yes, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, well, I don't know. Um, you, I, you're, you're talking about the, the Herrero case against uh, the German yeah. Libya. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, that some of the things that, you know, the Germans are accused of doing, the British did it in Kenya. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Poisoning wells. Mm -hmm. That was the main, main crime. Where they couldn't defeat the Herrero fighters. They poisoned the people's wells so that people drink water and they die. Genocide, basically. Now, in the case of Kenya, there's plenty of oral, oral reports of biological warfare by British government, colonial government, where they would spread pests that have never to this day been eradicated in some parts of Kenya, that did not exist before. Now they do, and they are a menace. So, I think, I repeat, there's so much that needs to be uncovered <coughs> I'm so happy that you have started this process in this way. And in fact, as again a bit like David Anderson said, at least in the case of Kenya, I think with this book and with this case, this is a real start of and starting to talk about Mao Mao. Prior to that, you know, shh, we were, you know. Yeah, one of the one of the most important thing we have always to acknowledge is that uh, the first uh, Kenya government um, didn't want very good to the Mao Mao people. And I remember when I was sharing with uh, Gail Kateberi, the one who was talking, uh, most of the time he was so angry about that because it was like, we got independence, but after that, we didn't have the freedom because they couldn't congregate without being seen as if they have committed a crime. I mean, according to what he shares, that law was lifted 2004. And I remember very well in the <clears throat> documentary, The End of the Empire, when you watch it, um, you see President Kenyatta, the, of course, the father of the current Kenyatta. You know, he was the first president of Kenya, uh, being held shoulders by the Mau Maus and is being interviewed. And uh, someone says to him, what are you going to do with the Mau Mau? And he just says, I'm going to um, greet them as heroes. And that's it. And what will you do to their guns? They say, they will bring them to me, their government. You see the irony, to me, their government. So, 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 so when you see the starting point, it didn't do a lot of justice to the history. These people were fighting to get their land back, which was forcefully taken from them by the colonial government. Now, to greet them as heroes, that was not good enough. Then when you look into what was actually happening elsewhere, you come across so many different stories of torture. Look, um, when actually before the state of emergency in Kenya happened, records have it that 11,000 Kenyans from the forest villages were massacred. I mean, if you don't call that genocide, I don't know, maybe it's got a different name. 11,000 is quite a lot of people when you just begin to imagine it. When you look into what was also happening, the British government, and check this, it's a factual uh, on the record, spend thousands of pounds paying witch doctors to decontaminate those who had taken halts to fight as Mau Mau fighters. So that process alone is also an abuse because if all I have to do as a Kenyan I'm within the area where there are Mau Mau fighters, I may not have taken the oath. But someone will torture me, bring a witch doctor to put me through a process to decontaminate uh, what is in me that causes me to be loyal to the Mau Mau fighters. So that in itself is also an abuse. A lot of bad things happened. And it's good we are talking about this, and I hope we'll keep talking. It's not the end. 
Um, but uh, I mean, to just answer your question, it's a lot of things that went wrong. As to classify genocide or otherwise, or compare them to what happened in a hair or massacre, whatever, maybe Kenya was Kenya's case was a bit worse, perhaps over the top.